Hello, this is Kairasis, and in this mechanics video, we will be talking about ability damage calculations. WoW ability damage calculations have changed a lot throughout the years, and a lot of these specifics are not very well documented. Or, where they are documented, they can often be outdated. As such, my goal with this video is to try to clearly explain the mechanics involved for those that who may not be familiar with them, as they currently work in the Shadowlands and upcoming Dragonflight expansions. In particular, we will talk about how damage calculations function for single weapon non-caster specializations, how these calculations change with dual wielding, the differences associated with casters as well as spell power, and how hybrid classes are handled. For the first case, let us look at a non-caster class that uses a single weapon. And since I'm primarily a Blood Death Knight player, we will specifically use Morrowind as an example. When you look at Morrowind's tooltip on a WoW database website, you will notice that instead of showing you a fixed amount of damage like the tooltip does in game, it instead shows that Morrowind deals 53.295% of your attack power as physical damage to the target. So, the first concept we need to explain is what attack power actually is. Attack power has worked differently throughout the different expansions of World of Warcraft, but nowadays your attack power is mostly equal to your primary stat with some contribution from your main hand weapon DPS. So, for non-casters, your primary stat is either going to be strength or agility depending on your specialization. Every one point of your primary stat will give you one point of attack power, while the attack power contribution from your main hand weapon is six times your weapon DPS, where the exact attack power and base damage of your weapon largely doesn't matter for actual ability damage. This attack power bonus from weapon damage is present for all abilities that non-caster classes use, even if the ability isn't something that you would typically associate with a weapon attack, such as Death and Decay for Blood Death Knights. So, if you have this 233 item level Japhus with 65.3 weapon DPS, it is providing you with 391.8 attack power from its weapon damage alone on all of your damaging and healing abilities. Meanwhile, the 87 strength from this weapon would only be providing you with 87 attack power, not accounting for any strength multipliers your character may have. Three exceptions exist for this ability damage calculation, and they are worth pointing out. First, there do exist sources of direct attack power that do not come from your primary stat, but they are extremely rare and are generally from legacy items and effects from the days when attack power used to be a more independent character stat. So, for the most part, we can pretend these sources don't exist in the current state of the game. Second, some damaging and healing effects are based off of something different than your attack power, such as abilities that scale off of your maximum health. These effects are generally uncommon, but they are not hard to find if you are willing to go look for them. In any case, I won't be talking about them too much in this video. Third, Hybrid classes with a mix of caster and non-caster specializations provide their caster specializations with an alternative source of attack power so that abilities shared between each of their specializations do comparable damage. But we will talk about this last point in more detail later. There are a few other concepts we need to cover first. For now, we are just going to ignore any potential exceptions and talk about how this base attack power value is modified before the final ability damage is calculated. In particular, we will be talking about four other inputs that are used to calculate ability damage. The ability coefficient, the spec or a modifier, all associated damage modifiers, and, when appropriate, the haste modifier. The ability coefficient is rather straightforward since it is tied to the ability we are using, and we have already seen it for our example ability, Morrowind. In particular, the 53.295% of attack power we see on the Morrowind tooltip is the ability coefficient. Just be careful if you are looking at abilities that have multiple ranks and get stronger as your character levels up, such as Heart Strike for Blood Death Knights. If you look at the ability heart strike, it has a base attack power coefficient of 35.92%, but there is a rank 3 effect for heart strike that is unlocked at level 52, which increases heart strike's damage by 20%. 
So, if you ignore this rank 3 effect, you will notice that your in-game tooltip damage will be 20% higher than what you may have otherwise calculated. The second modifier is spec specific. Every specialization has something that is sometimes referred to as a spec aura. Basically, it is a combination of modifiers that are applied to your class abilities based on your active specialization. And Blizzard sometimes changes the value on these auras as a quick method for balancing specializations mid-expansion. If you want to see what your spec aura is, the easiest way to look it up is to search for your spec and class on a WoW spell database website. For example, if I wanted to look up the spec aura for Blood Death Knights, I would simply search for Blood Death Knight. As you can see, the listed tooltip for the spec aura is extremely bloated. Not only that, but there are multiple effects associated with the spec aura that are not listed in the tooltip. If you wanted to know the full listing of effects, you would need to read through the full listing of spell data. However, for the purposes of this immediate example, the most relevant effects are shown on the tooltip. In short, the shown effects are increasing the damage of most Blood Death Knight abilities by 6%, Death Strike damage is being increased by 153%, and the Death Knight Stamina passive is being modified to provide 20% additional stamina for Blood Death Knights in particular, because they are a tank specialization. Again, the Spec Aura tooltip is only showing 4 of the 15 effects, so 11 other effects exist in the spell data such as a Tank Threat modifier, Tank Critical Strike immunity, and an additional damage modifier for Death and Decay damage, among other things. So, if we are just concerned with Mara Rend, the Spec modifier is 106%, while Death Strike would have a combined Spec modifier of 253% after accounting for both Death Strike modifying effects in the Spec Aura, which are effects that interact multiplicatively. These modifiers aren't advertised well in-game, but there's not really much that can be done about that. So, with our Spec Aura modifier in hand, let us talk about the third modifier, the Lumped Damage modifier. I'm using this as a catch-all term for any and all increased damage effects that are directly increasing ability damage. This can include the increased damage and healing effect from versatility, it can be increased damage or attack power from mastery, it could be talents, buff effects, legendary effects, or any other effects that affect ability damage. So you can name just about anything for this category. While these damage multipliers exist in many forms, it isn't too complicated to figure out how they impact our overall ability damage, since they are all straightforward multipliers. Finally, I have a haste modifier if you are calculating the ability damage of a haste scaling effect. For example, most damage or healing over time effects in the game will tick faster with more haste, so a 20% more haste would result in 20% more damage or healing. That being said, there are plenty of damage or healing over time effects that do not scale with haste, and Death Knights in particular have a lot of damage over time effects that do not scale with haste. And so, taken together, we can calculate our attack power from our strength and 6 times our weapon DPS. We can multiply this by the Mara Rend ability coefficient of 53.295%. Our spec aura increases our Mara Rend damage by an additional 6%. The two generic damage multipliers that apply in this case is our versatility increased damage and our increased attack power coefficient from tank mastery. And, because Mara Rend is a straightforward direct damage ability, it does not benefit from any form of haste scaling. That being said, we have mostly been looking at tooltip damage this whole time, so we are not considering critical strike damage in these calculations, and, being a physical attack, actual Mara Rend damage will generally be reduced by about 30% due to enemy armor, if you want to check the actual damage the ability does against enemies. With the first case out of the way, we are now going to look at the differences associated with dual wielding. For the second case, we are going to talk about non-caster classes on specializations that can only dual wield, so they don't even have the option of using a two-handed weapon, even if they wanted to. So, for example, Demon Hunters. 
If you start to take a look through their abilities, you will notice that most of the tooltips look similar to what we would see on Blood Death Knights, where damage values are represented by a simple attack power coefficient. You can see that in this tooltip for Soul Cleave, which provides an attack power coefficient of 70.2% for damage and an attack power coefficient of 50% for healing. For these types of abilities, the attack power calculation remains exactly the same as what you saw before in the Blood Death Knight example. Specifically, only your main hand weapon DPS is considered when calculating total attack power, while your offhand weapon DPS does not matter at all for this ability, despite the fact that you have one equipped. However, there are a few abilities where you will see something different, such as Fracture, which has a 40% and an 80% attack power coefficient that are added together. Whenever you see this notation, the first value is associated with the normal attack power calculations based off of your main hand weapon, while the second value is associated with something called offhand attack power. Offhand attack power is calculated separately from normal attack power, with the main differences being that it is affected by offhand weapon DPS instead of main hand weapon DPS, and that the final value gets cut in half. So, if you are using an identical weapon in each hand, offhand attack power will be exactly half of your normal attack power. Again, offhand attack power is not used by default for most abilities on a class like Demon Hunter, so it is only relevant for a small number of their abilities like Fracture, or if you are trying to calculate offhand auto attack damage. But beyond that, your overall ability calculations as a Demon Hunter are going to be exactly the same for any standard ability for most abilities. And even when we are considering abilities with offhand components, these hits use similar calculations when calculating damage for the offhand portion, except that the offhand attack power and offhand ability coefficients can be different. The final non-caster case is a little more complicated, since this involves specializations that have the ability to either dual wield or to use a two-handed weapon, such as Frost Death Knights. Let us start by looking at Obliterate, which is a single hit attack or a double hit attack depending on one we what weapon types you have equipped. So, with a two-handed weapon equipped, you would simply follow the original calculation using a 66.2% ability coefficient. But, if you happen to be dual wielding, you would then need to use the dual wield ability damage calculations with 44.73% ability coefficients for both your regular and offhand attack power values. Again, we have already viewed the calculations for both of these situations earlier, this is just the first time we are seeing both notations on the same ability tooltip. However, Specializations like Frost Death Knight have convoluted tooltips associated with many of their single hit abilities, such as Howling Blast. In order to make sure these abilities do similar damage regardless of what weapon types you are using, Blizzard decided to specifically modify attack power calculations depending on your weapon type. So, if you are using a two-hander, your standard attack power is multiplied by 98%. However, if you are dual wielding, your standard attack power and offhand attack power are combined before this total is multiplied by two thirds. In either case, the same ability coefficient of 14.37% is used for Howling Blast regardless of your weapon type. Only the attack power calculation is different. And other than the modified attack power values, all other portions of the calculations are the same as we saw in the straightforward non-caster case. Furthermore, the main implication of these calculations are that offhand weapon damage is more impactful on these specializations that can choose their weapon types than it is on pure dual wielding specializations. In any case, this should cover most of the situations you will run into with non-caster specializations. So now we will talk about casters and spell power. Instead of attack power, mo most caster abilities are based on spell power, such as Reign of Fire for Warlocks, which deals 10.8% of spell power multiplied by 8 for its total damage. 
And, luckily for us, spell power calculations aren't too different from attack power calculations. If anything, spell power is even simpler, since instead of being a combination of primary stat and weapon DPS, spell power doesn't even have a weapon DPS contribution. Similar to attack power, direct sources of spell power are extremely rare outside of legacy items and racial effects. Also, the non-caster specializations of hybrid classes have an alternative method of gaining spell power, which will be covered as the last topic of this video. And if you are worried about caster weapons being weaker than non-caster weapons, you will be happy to know that caster weapons generally have more primary stats to compensate. For example, here we have a two-handed strength sword and a two-handed intellect staff at an item level of 233. As you can see, there is a significant difference between the amount of primary stat on both items, where the staff has significantly more intellect than the sword has strength. And, outside of these small differences between attack power and spell power calculations, the rest of your ability damage is calculated the same way as before. Finally, we just need to touch on how hybrid classes work that have access to both attack power and spell power abilities. For this case, we will be using Paladins as an example of a hybrid class, since it has several shared abilities between all of its specializations that use either attack power or spell power depending on the ability. And yet, between the Paladin specializations, you will notice that attack power abilities are not significantly weaker for Holy Paladins, and that spell power abilities are not significantly weaker for Retribution and Protection Paladins. Instead, they are somewhat comparable in power level between the caster and non-caster specs. So, why is that? The secret to this is in the spec auras for each paladin spec. We talked about spec auras earlier in the video with Blood Death Knights, and you can find them for any specialization the same way. However, if you look through these spec auras for all hybrid specializations, you will find that caster specs have an override that makes their attack power equal to 104% of their spell power, while the non-caster specs for hybrid classes have an override that makes their spell power equal to 96% of their attack power. In conclusion, we talked about standard ability damage calculations for non-caster classes, we reviewed the several differences associated with dual wielding, specifically about offhand attack power and when it is used, we discussed how pow spell power abilities on casters are different, and we saw how hybrid classes are able to have high amounts of both attack power and spell power, despite the fact that they are normally based off of different primary stats. If you would like to make it easier for other players to find this content, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, if there are any additional topics you would like to see in the future, or if you have any opinions of your own about ability damage calculations, I would like to hear your opinions in the comments below. I can be contacted through Discord, and my information can be found in the video description. In the meantime, good luck, and have fun.